Penang. Um, and I went to the Celtics along with Joel from Cavs, um, Theo, um, along with Jerron and Jure, the two bigs from, from Spartans, um, and Tehran left Clapham and went to Celtic. So it's a, it's a lot of new pieces, right? I'm interested to see how it's going to work out in terms of the personnel, the styles, because I know that this, these are at least three people who had the ball in their hands a lot. And that being the, the point guard, um, Joel being, maybe not having the ball in his hands as much as people would have liked at Cavs, but he did have the ball in his hands a, a decent amount of time. And Theo, who kind of dominated the ball at, at Spartans within good reason. So, um, so it's interesting to see now how they are going to gel. Um, also with, with Tehran wanting a bigger role now, that is going to be the biggest thing. Obviously, Charles is going to have to deal with that. So I think that is going to be the biggest thing in terms of seeing how there yeah, may be some going things. Maybe they might come out the gate and just blazing on everybody. But uh, we will have to to see. Um, they could, they, they, I could see them being a top four team, um, just based on the landscape of everybody else. But also, um, favorite to win. That's the sign that we were gonna see as we go down because um, we already know what the Bulls. Well, I guess when when we talk about these things, we uh, we can see that Bulls pretty much the same. Playing have won already with that four. So like you know, I we have people teams that have already won. So it's now to see if Celtics have made that jump in a first season. Yeah, I, I, the only issue I really have with the the, the Celtics retooling is that it, you know, as some it made it did not improve. It did not increase the number of good teams because what has happened is that mm -hmm. it's, it's been pulled from like for example, the Spartans now would be struggling. Yeah. And I know they would be looking at trying to, you know, trying to get themselves ready, mm -hmm. um, not to to be able to stay up and then to do it through. Yeah. So that's the only issue I have, but it, it's going to be interesting. I, I really am looking forward to the season. Um, yeah. who else made some serious moves that you think I I heard um that Ron Knight has left the plane and gone back to Celtic, uh sorry, Cavs. Yeah, um, as far as I know, Devon has gone back to to Cavs. Um, so that gives back Cavs like another big. Can't remember who was their big last year. I know AB came in, but I don't think that they really had a big from last year. If I can remember correctly, no. Well, so they, Devon, they, well, yeah, they played positionless basketball. So yeah, so more so Joel Saeed. Yeah, it was Joel yeah. and 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 Saeed. Um, yeah. So 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 Dev becomes like their their main big again. Um that obviously is a slight blow for Pine just in terms of size and just of that in size presence. They they still Pine still has enough talent overall <laughs> that um that they could definitely still defend, but just it might just be a different dynamic now because they wanna have the maybe the inside presence as far as I know that they're wrong but so um yeah, Cavs will be um, looking to compete once again. They lost Joel and Ian Devon, two different players, but you know maybe the the output could be the same. Maybe so. Yeah, interesting. I I I don't see. The, I don't think Cavs really, you know, like broken up that that um, you know that they lost they lost Joel, um, because when you get Devon, Devon being dominating the forwards in the low post, so. Yeah. Um, I I don't see them being they may miss him uh defensively and having a different like somebody who can go left in order to left hander, but um I don't see that they they having much problems with that. Um the pylons, I don't have a problem with pylons is usually playing they um their group, so they still have the core, so I don't see they have any issues with you know well they will lost Charlie um and, and his coaching. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think that there would be uh, they they would be, be too disturbed um as it relates to playing and they would have uh Kasirian Adams for at least the beginning of the season. So yeah. same as Rashi. So right. So it should be interesting. It should be interesting. I don't think the Pylons are 
you know, have much of problems. Um, Lakers, Lakers have, you know, they've been retooling. Um, I think they have a number of issues that they have to sort out. And once they sort them out, um, I think they should be there and thereabouts. But um, for sure, the last Final Four was uh, Bulls, uh, Pylons, um, it was Cavs. Lakers and, Lakers. Lakers and Cavs, yeah. Right. So I expect the Celtics will replace someone. And it may be the Lakers. All right. I don't see them replacing. I don't see the Cavs not making the playoffs. Um, I know Bulls may have some issues, but I don't see them not making the playoffs. Um, but yeah, so it will come down to a one spot. And I think um Lakers might find themselves, you know, fighting for that that final spot, uh, one way or the other. And hopefully, hopefully they could get in. Um, the other thing though is the newcomers. Um, that's Warren's. I I know yeah. I know that Dalton Johnson Dalton left Lakers and he's now back home at Warren's. Uh, I don't know much about their team. So do you know any any other uh, players they would have to come and try to actually try to, you know, make a splash this season? Yeah. Um, boy, what I know is 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 kind of a bunch of um, young, a mix of like young and old guys, older guys that would have played for Warriors before. So uh, some of the young guys are Khalil, um, Grant, um, Dotting, Antoine. Antoine has left Pine and he's not back to to um to Warren's uh and Brandon Hope. So those are like some of the young guys. And then some of the mix of the old guys would be people like um Jamar King, uh Greg and Clyde. So it, it is a mixture of people who have played for Warren's before, whether they were uh at Prem and um or in first division, sorry, will be second division. So is 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 a familiarity between them because all of them would have played things. So um it's an interesting thing. I, I'm not sure if they can compete for a playoff spot, but you know everyone is trying just trying to stay up. At yeah. I, I think that they could 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 definitely stay up. Yeah. You know, so. And the other team is Spartans. I think they have taken the biggest hit of everybody. Yeah. When it comes yeah. to personnel, um, huh. I they they have changed their coach, yeah, and I think I think their their job as well will be trying to keep their heads above water and then go in the recruiting market for the next season. Uh, but everybody is from from five to eight will be doing that, so <laughs> yeah. we'll see what happens. We will see what happens during the season. But I really think this this BA BA season will be very interesting. Um, I am really looking forward to seeing how the teams uh put together there, you know, all how they can play. Uh, we would have had a uh, coaching clinic in Barbados, and we have some newly minted um level one coaches, and they were trying to prove that you know they, they could do their stuff, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I just think that my only, as I told you, my only issue is that. When Celtics has, has gotten better, but a lot of the teams have gotten worse. And uh, really and truly, it means that the tournament is still down to like four or five teams. I want yeah. to see the day when, when the tournament is actually eight teams and people actually vying for that playoff spot. Yeah, I I, I I actually was telling, um, I was having this, this on here. I remember like there were years when I first came in Prem. Really, it was six seventeen. Like I remember a, a time when Bulls won ten games and didn't make the playoff. Like, can you imagine how many ten games now and not make the playoff? Yeah, like, we, actually, like, ten we games, actually ten games might be the number one team. Was <laughs> exactly so like like I, like back then like we 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 missed the playoffs many ten games. The next team, which would be sixteen, had like nine or so games. When it was like back then, it was like you. It was a real fight because I think we we didn't get in off of the last day. Like no, we we pretty much know who it is for a tiny second all start. He's like, yeah, these are the four teams. And really and truly the only fighting is for position amongst right. the four teams. It's like, okay, yeah. um, who gonna play who and, and and stuff. So um hopefully 
Lakers, as you say, can be um can get their stuff together where that it could be a five man of a five team race instead of four, because that is if we all knew that it was four last year. Even mm-hmm. five will be a step in the right direction of it, at least being interesting, maybe um coming on to the end. So yeah, so that is the BBS preseason. We have to look at the NBA. And with me is this is um we call the Pedro Scope Alapinda. A man from the NBA, you know, he gets all the NBA news and views and whatever that happened in the NBA. So we'll get right to it. Um this season, um uh, Alan, we look at the this season for the Warriors in the West. Um the they traded um they traded away um Jordan Poole. They brought in Chris Chris um never oh, Chris Paul who's not injured. Never <laughs> had a season before injury, Paul. I know I know they're I mean they're really they really look poor now, I must admit. And they're having issues, not only issues with with um personnel, but they're having issues with people you know, not having confidence that they could, you know, actually get the minutes that they deserve, the younger people. And, but I must admit, I watched some Warriors games and um, Wiggins and and Clay Thompson really don't look the part. Um, so what do you think uh, the Warriors could do to retool and see if they can make a championship run? Yeah, I'm not sure they can do a whole lot to retool, honestly. I think it's probably time to tear it down for them right now. It's look to rebuild. Have you even heard guys considering trading stuff at this point? It won't necessarily go that far, but yeah, I think they definitely need to um definitely look at a rebuild. I'm not sure. I mean, things went pretty well a couple of years ago when they won the championship. Even back then, I thought they may have a challenge, but they came back from the injury and he was really good. Steph went to another level. Wiggins had a bit of an older body experience. He was playing extremely high level defense. Um, his rebound was great, and he was shooting extremely efficient from the field. I mean, we know Wiggins is a talented player, player, but he went to another level during that playoff run. And you think with Wiggins over the years, he's had issues with consistency, and it's kind of coming back right now. So, and then the young players haven't panned out the way how they were expecting. They were hoping that. They could have two timelines and these young guys could eventually take over for the older guys. But um, Moody, Kaminga, I, I don't think these guys are the type of elite talents. I don't think they're going to evolve into those type of elite talents. So um, unfortunately, let's resign these guys. But I think they may lead to look to look to start a rebuild at some point soon because I don't think they're really going to go anywhere this year. Yeah, I I, I kind of concur with you. I. I've never seen a team rebuild in the middle of a season and actually win. You know, there are many. I mean, I actually went to win, went not to win a championship or at least a championship game. It is not that easy, especially after you play a 40 something games. Uh, what do you I, think? I think, um, I, I think they're hoping to do what like, the Lakers did last year. The Lakers were struggling last year. They did that rush trade and then they really make a, a run to the, to the West Semis um, or West Finals they got to last year. So, I think they're hoping to get a move like that, but yeah, it's, it's gonna be tough. At this stage, though, at this stage of, of of the Warriors, though, I don't think they'll be looking to get the final a uh, uh, conference final. They will be looking to get the actual finals. So I don't think that can happen right now, and I I would be more surprised if they if they don't um, tear it down and rebuild. I don't know if they'll do it in the middle of the season, but I think it's time for a rebuild. What do you think they are? Um, the Avenger only one, Keelan Phillips. Yeah, um, tearing it down or, or making a huge roster change in the middle of the season only works when you have LeBron James, apparently. Because I remember years ago, I mean, the Cavs, when he traded away, not he, but the, the team traded away almost <laughs> everybody. That that team that had that Rose and doing it, and they made it to the, the finals the, um, against all odds. And then last year, when they traded away uh, Russell, and then they made it to the conference final. So LeBron James seems to be the common factor there. So Warriors don't have him. So I, I am not too sure about that. But um yeah, it is it's tough for the games and 
clear have regressed in a ways that I don't think the Warriors expected. I think I think Warriors with begins being I think only twenty eight. Um, I think is where he's supposed to be in his athletic prime. So I'm thinking they were thinking that Wiggins would continue. And even if Clay was making made any sort of decline, I don't think that they were expecting Wiggins to make this much of a decline. I think that that is a big factor. Um, the way how they have managed the young versus the old is kind of tough. Doing both timelines is, in my opinion, that's that's very hard to do. I feel like that doesn't really work. Like if it works, I feel like that's a one time only thing because you either have to go all in on the rebuild or you have to go all in on, on the championship. And for them to have to have the old guys, so it's like, oh, we still got to play the old guys who want us four rings, but yet we still got to give minutes to develop the young guys like Moody and um, Kaminga. Yeah, it's, that's a very tough way to balance. Obviously, it's not working because the young guys are saying that they don't trust the coach anymore and stuff like that, but then you still kind of sometimes want to play clay, but then sometimes he get benches. That's a whole mess. I think the only way that they do a rebuild, unfortunately, not unfortunately, is if Steph kind of co signs on it. Because I don't see a situation where like Steph, like they trade clay or whatever, or Draymond kind of without Steph saying, like, I think we should trade these guys. However, he did mention though. If we keep doing the same thing over and over again, that that is it, kind of insanity. So I think he's implying that he may be open to more change than we expected. Yeah. Well, you know, the, I I think the two timeline thing could have worked, but oh, Draymond, Draymond, go, Draymond punching somebody doesn't help too. <laughs> well, that yeah, that could be a little problematic, but I, I think I mean they were lucky in the draft when getting guys like Draymond Green and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you draft Flow and by the other way on them as well. Yeah. Because they drafted Wiseman. I think that same year they could have drafted Halliburton. Or the year they drafted or Arlemano. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the year they drafted uh, I mean, I think they could have gotten Sean Goon uh, as well. Mm. So yep. I mean, yep. if 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 they if they were lucky those two years and they use their picks a little differently, I mean, you can see those guys now transitioning potentially being you know more more yeah. major roles and so it could have worked but it, they didn't get the guys that can really ask you that yeah well i i uh, agree with most of what it was said um i think there needs to be some sort of uh rebuild and i don't see it happening in the middle of the season so i think they will have to write out i expect that clear will test the free agency market and he probably will be on his way out. I think Wiggins had an issue with some personal thing that he left. Um, he left the the Warriors for a while. Uh, last then, year, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's last year. Yeah. Right. yeah, he has not been seen since then. So yeah, I don't know I agree with that. what it was, but he has not been the same. I mean, he always had problems with consistency, but I mean, this drop off has been dramatic, and it's not like if he's forty. So. Yeah. Hmm. We will see how, how, how the Warriors work on that. But then we look at the East, and the not much um, anticipated um, trade with uh, Pascal Siakam going to um, the Indiana Pacers. And I really want to know if that now puts the Pacers in that, you know, in that like middle tier, second tier sort of people. Actually, I would like to hear your opinion on the tears, really. What in the East, how, how do you see the whole thing lining up, Alan? Well, I think we were saying before, we felt that you saw that the Bucks and the Sixers were really the contenders in the East. Yes. And then there was a second group of teams that, even if you look at the standings, are separated maybe by two, three, four games. They're in very tight, which has the Cavs and the Knicks, the Heat, the Pacers, and the Magic. Um, I think once healthy, this trade could vault Indiana into the top of that tier. Um, I think they would. I think probably the, the Knicks, I, I think the Knicks, the Heat, and the Pacers are probably the top three teams, probably in that tier. But I think um, once healthy, Indiana's offense is top notch. This trade only makes the offense even better and it helps them uh, defensively, helps them plus some holes that they really had on the roster. 
and they had done pretty well against the top teams in the East. I think they split their games with the Sixers and the Celtics, and they beat about four out of five. So, uh, yeah, once healthy, I think this could definitely put them at the top of that tier. So that will put them in the fourth, fourth spot in the, in the East, potentially again the uh, home court in the first round. But again, health is the major factor that haven't been healthy in the last 10 or so games. So you see how that works. So, but yeah, I think it puts somebody top of that tier. Okay. What about you, um, Keelan? What do you think that puts the Indiana Pacers? Actually, how do you look at the tiers? Yeah, I kind of see them see it in the same way. Those top three, as we know, the Celtics, the Bucks, and the Seven Sixers. Um, and then that middle tier is like four. Maybe even five teams. I can't remember. Um, Pacers, Magic, Knicks, um, uh, Cavs, and, and the, yeah. So like that middle tier is where really, like um, I think this trade puts the Pacers. I I I basically agree with Alan. I think that that puts them at the top of this tier. Um, still remains to be seen, obviously, in terms of working out chemistry and new roles or uh, uh, whatever. Because I think Siakam no. Could be that next score. Um, while while Halliburton still scores, yes, but like so facilitates and get everybody involved. Siakam has has season really average 23, 24 points per game. Um, so I think he could be like that score. He's also um decent on defense that he will help them defensively. This year it is I, I was having a, a, a discussion about this trade. I really like this trade because they didn't give up that much to get him. And also, this year for the Pacers is kind of like one of those feel years. What I mean by that is that they've they've gone into a series where yeah they can make the playoffs, right? So they're saying, all right, let's make a little swing here and see how far we can really get, right? Before they decide, all right, we see what we have, can we make even more changes now? Because I believe that this puts in the in the right situation, Indiana could be a second round. Out. When like one of those say if they made that for a five range, they could win a first round matchup and then make it tough for uh one of the big three teams in the east in the second round. I think if they end up in that six, seven range, that's where it gets a little tricky in terms of winning a round, because then they will have to face off again either the Celtics, seven sixes, or Bucks. And while they have beaten the Bucks in the regular season, I can't say for sure yes that. It means that they will win against the Bucks in the playoff because I've seen teams sweep teams in the regular season in terms of the series and then lose in the playoffs. So, I, I, yeah, so like I think it is one of those. Mo- I I still like the move, even if they get not twenty first round or even I think it's still a great move for the Pacers, considering that that they didn't make the playoffs last year. I think they made a huge step. Holly Burton is firmly one of the best guards in the league and definitely in the East. So I really like the move. It doesn't put them in that top four tier, but right there as in that we're well, not top four top like top one tier but like it definitely puts them close to the top if not the top okay that's that's i agree um i think they're missing at least one more player um yeah. uh, once they get that player they should be they should be good um yeah. but yes that's that's those two pieces the east and the red of course we cannot leave without doing our pick five. And our pick five this evening, and I must admit that um Keelan is still leading and, and Alan is still second and but everybody everything is took note. So <laughs> so let's go to the pick five. The first one is Denver at Indiana. <laughs> Denver Ooh. at Indiana. Um I know that Alan will go for Indiana. I go Indy, man. And I will go for Denver. So that's what leaves you, Kilan. Oh, no. I, I going for Denver. There's nothing against the Pierce and Robbie, but Jamal yeah. Murray is all my favorite Pierce, too. So I got the Indians. And then on Wednesday, we have Portland at Houston. Portland at Houston. This should be an interesting matchup. <laughs> for who? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I think Rockets <laughs> definitely got that. Rockets. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you you're going with Rockets. Yeah, with Rockets. Um, too. You're going with Rockets too, Keelan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I go with Portland just because. And on Thursday, 
Boston at Miami. Real strange team, Miami. Ooh, it is Boston at Miami. Boston at Miami. Uh, you know what? I might actually go with Heat. Celtics are not the best road team right now. And I just feel like Heat match up well against, for some reason, against the Celtics. So I'm going to go with the Heat. I just swing on the Heat. So you're going to Miami? Yeah. So Keelan, I'm going to Miami.